Welcome everybody. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the CAP theorem. This has to do with database availability and consistency. At first, it seems like a fairly complex idea, but the result of this is fairly simple. So I'll try to give you the most important things you need to know about this first, and then we'll explain the theorem in more detail. For this to all make sense, there are two attributes of distributed database systems you should be familiar with. The first one is consistency, and the second one is availability. Now, the CAP theorem is C-A-P, with the P being partition tolerance. We're going to talk about that next, but we're going to start with these two because these are the most two important terms that you should know. But before we get started with that, I wanted to share with you two things, the first being a link to a backend engineering mind map, which will show you all of the major technologies you should be somewhat familiar with and the categories that they fit in. This will also give you an example roadmap of how to start learning these technologies and what order to learn them in. So if you're interested in that, it's a free resource and I have a link to that below. The second major thing is if you want to either level up your software engineering career or switch into software engineering, I have a mentorship program where you can get one-on-one -on -one support to learn things like this and many other topics in software engineering. So if you feel that you're finally ready to make that move in your career, check out that link down below. Now these are specifically going to come up when you're working with distributed databases. So you can imagine having multiple nodes in your database system. So here is our database system. In this case, we have three nodes. Now let's first take a look at consistency, which just says that the data across these nodes, it has to be in sync. So if we make a request to this node here, and let's say we are writing some data, and we make a request here and we are reading some data, this read has to get the most recent write. So there is never a scenario where these nodes have different data. So that's consistency. So this is all about always having the most recent data. Now availability has to do with getting a response. So if I make a request to this database, it's going to give me back some data. So this has to do with getting a response. So consistency says the data must be the most up-to-date data, while availability says that there has to be some data given back. And the CAP theorem basically says you have to choose between these two options. You can't guarantee both of them. To understand this, let's go through a quick scenario where for some reason something happens and this node has the most up-to-date data. And at this moment, this node is still functional, but for some reason it has outdated data. So these are not in sync. And then I make a request to this node. And the question is, what do I get back? If you wanted to guarantee both of these, you would have to have the most recent data and get a response. But we can't offer both of those in this scenario because we don't have the most recent data. So we can either give an error or give outdated data. So you must choose which one you want to do. It's impossible to always give a response with data and also have the guarantee that the response always has the most recent data. So you can either, in the scenario where these are out of sync, error or give outdated data. And it might be the scenario that these will eventually get back in sync, and that's called eventual consistency but that's different than strong consistency, which is the idea of what we're talking about here, where they have to be in sync all of the time. Even if there's just a small delay, if you want it to be available, you might have to deliver outdated data for certain periods of time. Because even a simple request as writing data will take time to propagate from this node over to this node. And that time delay, you will deliver outdated data so that this node is still available. So we didn't really talk about it in much detail, but I said, for some reason, these nodes got out of sync. What is that situation? That idea could be anything, and it's called a partition. So this is referring to a network partition between nodes. The communication between nodes fails for some reason. And this is the P in the CAP theorem. So the general idea is that we're guaranteed to have some partitions, and we have to choose between consistency or availability. And this is something that you might be able to configure or certain databases will have different approaches, but you can think about different scenarios where you might want one over the other. In the case of a financial application, 
you would probably want things to be consistent. You don't want one request to say that somebody has $1,000 and another request to say somebody has $0 because that data is out of sync. Those data discrepancies could lead to potentially invalid financial transactions being made. We don't ever want that kind of thing to happen. So financial applications prioritize consistency. If you're making an application that is not very serious and it doesn't really matter if your data is a little bit outdated, you would probably prioritize availability. So for example, if you created a blogging platform and there's a delay between when you create a blog and when that blog is actually showing up for a read, that's not a big problem. It might just take a little bit of extra time for that blog to show up in people's feed. So that would be a scenario where it makes a lot more sense to prioritize availability. So you'll often see the cap theorem drawn out with three circles, and it'll look something like this, where we have a circle here, a circle here, and a circle here. Now my circles look like trash, but the idea is that this is consistency, this one's availability, and this one is partition tolerance. And when you have a database system, you will need to choose one of these overlapping sections, but you can't achieve all three. So this would be AP, this would be CP, or this one here, CA. So we talked about all three of these, but we didn't really give a formal definition for partition tolerance, which basically says that even with communication being disrupted between nodes, things will still function. So this is important because network partitions or network failures between nodes are inevitable. So we have to choose a database system that has partition tolerance and can continue to function even if that happens. And that's the reason why we only really have to talk about these two here because this CA scenario is more theoretical or not really an option to choose from but we could still talk about what that would look like in theory. So we'll just go through each one of these real quick. AP, this is a system that will prioritize availability, meaning if there is a disconnection between the nodes, reading from one node versus the other, you might get different data, but the system is available. Now let's talk about CP. If there is a disconnection between nodes and the data is not in sync, the system becomes unavailable but we're not serving inconsistent data. So we always prioritize consistency in this section. And then in this section, we have a system that always serves consistent data and is always available because there's never a scenario where those nodes lose connection between each other. The nodes will always be in sync and requests will always get a response. So the summary of all of this and the question that you can ask yourself that will help you understand CAP theorem as well as what type of database system to choose is if you're given a network partition, which again is a inability for nodes to communicate between each other, do you choose consistency, bringing the system offline because you don't want to serve outdated data, or do you prioritize availability giving them a response, but potentially outdated data. So that's an overview of the CAP theorem. There's probably a lot more to it. And another interesting thing is it doesn't always have to be the case where we have consistency across all of the nodes. If you have a certain number of nodes that you are required to write to and a certain number of nodes that you are required to read from, you can still achieve consistency. So that's getting a little bit more into some of the advanced database clustering concepts, but you can do some research on quorums and database consensus. So these are all kind of like the next steps and probably some things we'll get into in this series. So hopefully this was helpful and a good introduction. It can be a bit confusing at first, but once you understand network partitions are just a part of life, you just have to decide what you want to prioritize in the scenario where nodes cannot communicate with one another. It's probably a decision that keeps a lot of you guys up at night, but hopefully with what you've learned from this video, you can make an educated guess based on the types of applications you're making. Just remember, if the data needs to be the same across all of the nodes, such as financial applications, 
then consistency is going to be the way to go. If instead you would prefer that people get responses, even if the data is potentially a little bit out of date, then availability is the way to go. That decision ultimately comes down to you and what kind of system you're making. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's a choice based on the system requirements. Well, that's all I got on this one. Peace out. Don't forget to check the links in the description. We got a mind map for backend engineering. We have a mentorship program for more advancements in your software engineering career. Probably a bunch of other amazing resources. So check those out and I'll see you in the next video.